Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to our teaching for today. And today I just want to share some things that God has spoken to me about concerning the new year. You know, at the beginning of every year, it is normal for people to kind of wonder what is God saying about this year or what's going to happen this year. And ever since we experienced a lot of volatility inside of the world in 2013, many people want to know, you know well, is the Antichrist showing up? This year, what about the blood moons? Are we going to enter into the tribulation? What's going to happen? Is the economy going to crash? Is the dollar going to crash? What's going on? We want to know something. Are there going to be more earthquakes and hurricanes and, and tsunamis? Is there going to be more, uh, you know, so many things that causing people to actually uh, view the things that are happening in our world. And, you know, it's a sad thing, but there's a lot of people in the church that has no idea of what's going on around them. And so, we just want to come. We don't have any updates for you. There's quite uh, plenty preachers and prophets and prognosticators on YouTube. I'm quite sure that's updating people on the events that are taking place. And you can just find them online and just find out what's going on around the world and not just by your own lo local news stations or national news for that matter. But I believe that God has placed some things in my heart concerning living in this year. You know, um, I've been a stickler of the teaching called Last Days Living, wanting to know how God's people should fare and how shall we live in these last days? Because I believe that we are in the last days. You know, one of the things the scripture did tell us, Paul said, in the last days, perilous times shall come. And we all can conclude that we're living in the last of the last days. And so I believe there's some things that God want me to share with you. And number one thing that we're going to talk about is this living one day at a time. You know, we can't live for the next week. We can't live for next month or next year. You know, I know at the beginning of the year, we want God to do things for us, you know, for the entire year. Lord bless our year. But actually, God will only do what he promised in his word. He will bless us in the day, in the now, in the time in which we live. Now, let's talk about living one day at a time. How do we do this? In Luke chapter 11, verse number three, Jesus told us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. Notice he told, he didn't tell us or teach us to pray that you would give us bread for tomorrow and bread for next week or bread for next month or bread for next year. He said, give us this day our daily bread. Now he's answering a request that his disciples made. Remember, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. And so what Jesus is doing here is he's teaching his disciples the things that are important. Give us this day so we can only live one day at a time. God is only going to meet our needs for what we have for the day that we're living in. You know, tomorrow will take care of itself. In fact, he also told us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. Now notice he said, give us our daily bread. So we can't try to live for tomorrow. We can't try to live for next month, next year. We must live daily. And so we got to learn to live in the now. He meets our needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. So therefore, a riches in glory, but rather by Christ Jesus. So therefore, my needs are right now. Tomorrow's need will be taken care of tomorrow. But right now I have need for now. I can't breathe air for tomorrow. <laughs> you see, I don't need tomorrow's breath until tomorrow gets here. So he's meeting, he's teaching us how to live daily. Jesus lived in it now. You know, uh, he believed God every time he went to a place or whatever, every provision that he needed for that time was made at that time. So we got to understand we can't when we start cons getting concerned about what we're going to eat tomorrow, what we're going to drink tomorrow, what we're going to wear tomorrow. We're getting into what we call worry. And God tells us, don't worry about these things, how we shall eat, how we should drink, uh, what we should put on. You know, uh, don't worry about these things. Will you have a job tomorrow? He told us not to worry about these things. So here it is. We need to learn how to live in the now. You know, the Bible says in faith, uh, 11th, I mean, Hebrews chapter 11, I almost say faith chapter. Well, it is a faith chapter, but Hebrews 11 chapter, uh, verse number one, he says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, I know Paul was connecting. Uh, there's no separation between chapters 10 and chapters 11, but he says, now faith is. And so I just want to point out that he says now faith in and faith is always in the now. It's always in the present. We're believing God for what we need right now. And so Habakkuk chapter one, verse number four tells us that the just shall live by faith. I live for the now. 
I live for the present. My present needs are met according to his riches in glory. So my tomorrow needs, we believe in God that it will be met, but I'm not concerned about that because I'm not living tomorrow yet. I'm living today. We don't know whether we'll be cut off tomorrow. We don't know whether we will die tonight or die in the morning or something like that. So therefore that won't be a necessity because tomorrow morning, if I'm not here, guess what? I'm in glory. So therefore I don't have to worry about those things. But right now God promises to meet my need in the now. So we need to learn to live by faith. What's going to happen further on in the year? We're not concerned about that because once you start getting concerned about what's going to happen in the middle of the year or at the end of the year, or whatever, you're going to get into worry. Are you saying not to be prepared? Absolutely not. We prepare ourselves. We are supposed to prepare ourselves. And so as a result, we prepare ourselves, but we don't prepare because we are worried about what's going to happen the next day. God will take care of his people regardless of what's happening in the world. So once again, the just live by faith in Habakkuk chapter one, verse number four, I think I said Hebrews, but it's Habakkuk chapter one, verse number four, where he says, now the just shall live by his faith. His faith in who? His faith in his God. Who is our God? Our God is Elohim. Our God is, is Jehovah. Our God is uh, Yahweh. So therefore, we're believing him to meet all our needs. Now, remember, he told us a parable through his son, Yeshua, Jesus. He told us that consider the lilies, consider the birds of the airs, you know, and all of these. Listen, they don't have to worry about where the meal is coming from. And he told us that we must accept the kingdom of God as a little child. See, when I was a child, I didn't worry about the light bill, didn't worry about the water bill, didn't worry about whether the gas was going to be on the next morning. Guess what? I rose up, went to school, came back home like if everything is already taken care of. Now, that was my parents' responsibility to make sure that I was being taken care of, not mine. So I didn't worry about it. I just went to sleep, rose up, went to school, you know, came back home, happy as a lock. Now, if the water was cut off or something like that or whatever, then uh, it's no concern of mine because my parents are supposed to be responsible for that. So that's the same thing God is saying. As a child in the kingdom of God, we are not to worry about our necessities. Our daily necessities will be taken care of our parent and our parent is Father God. So therefore, Hebrews 11 chapter verse number one says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And Yeshua taught us not to take thought of the things for tomorrow. In fact, let's look at that in Matthew chapter number six, and we're gonna look at verse number uh, 34. Matthew six uh, chapter, verse number 34 says this. He says, therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Sufficient for today, it's its own trouble. So therefore he tells us, don't worry. Tomorrow, things will be taken care of. Father will take care of our needs for tomorrow on what? Tomorrow. Amen. So, so now, now this is what God wants us to do. He don't want us to worry about it. And we need to learn to live in the now. But at the same time, he wants us to take advantage and seize every moment and every opportunity while there's still time. Now, let's look in the book of Ephesians and say, see what the Bible has to say about that, because um, God wants us to be very good stewards of the time that we have been given to manage. You know, understand that we are just stewards here in the earth. And as stewards, that means that we are managers, that we, we are responsible for managing what God has given, <clears throat> excuse me, unto us. Okay, now l look at what the Bible says here in, um, um, in Ephesians chapter 4, verses number 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Notice he says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So now God gives all of us time. People are stewards of a deposit of time given by God, and we will be held responsible for what we do with the time that has been allotted to us. Let me say that again. People are stewards and of a deposit that has been given by God, and we will be ha we're responsible of how we manage our time. See, time is governed by God. He's the giver of life. So therefore, we understand that he determines every man's lifespan. He knows the day of our birth, our day, of, let's say it this way. He knows the day of our conception, he knows the day of our birth, and he knows the days of our death. So we can understand that God has determined every one of our lifespans. And he will demand an account of how we spent our time while we were in the earth. Once again, he will demand an account 
of how we spend our time. See, we can spend our time living ungodly lives or we can spend our time neglecting God given opportunities. And so every man's going to give an account. Listen, the Bible talks about the talents that the man has been given. One has been given uh, 10, one has been given five, and one has been given one. So I don't care how much time you've been given on this earth. You have a birth date, you have a death date, and in between, between the birth and the death, God has given us time to use wisely or you can manage it unwisely. But you will give an account of the time that you use spent on the earth. Now, let me say something else about that. Um, our time is to be spent wisely in our worship and our meditation and adoration unto God. Number two, our time ought to be spent in work because that's one of the things that God told Adam. He gave him, a, when he made Adam, he gave him a job, amen? We ought to spend time in rest. A lot of people ignore that. God has given us something that's called rest. It's called the Sabbath, and many of us ignore that. We go seven days a week, and we're trying to fill, burn the candle at both ends, and we're trying to fill all of this space with things that we can do, accumulating money or, or, or whatever we're doing or whatever, and entertainment and things like that. But we will give in a time of our uh, account of our time management. Something else, the time we spend with our family members. That is very important time. Spending time raising the children, spending time with your wife or your husband, your spouse or whatever, Turning off the TV and just connecting and keeping the relationship uh, with both God and the relationship with each other warm. And then our time in fellowship with one another. The Bible tells us that we're not to neglect the, the, the gathering of ourselves together with the saints. So we're going to give a t account of our time. There's other things that we can talk about concerning time, but I just want to show you once again, the Bible says that we ought to redeem the time. Uh, to, to take the time to redeem the time, um, making every opportunity that we have that we've been given in life. Because there are times where people are going to come by and what do we do with our time? Do we have time to, to speak with someone, to comfort someone, to encourage someone? Someone's going through something and they want to just sit and talk. And as a result, well, I don't have time now, you know, because I got to go to the mall or I got to go to the ice cream shop or, you know, um, somebody's waiting for me and I got to go do this or whatever. What is important? We have been given time to manage, and I believe that God is going to give, uh, make every man, and, and I know it, he's going to make every man give an account of what he should do. So understand, folks, when God spoke, he told me this, he told me this, and I, and I shared it with you just the other day, we have to learn to live in the now. We can't worry about what's going to happen later on in the year. Now, Paul said, as I told you at the beginning of this teaching, that uh, last days, perilous times shall come. There are many things that are going to happen, I believe, in the years to come, in the days to come, in the months to come, in the, in the weeks to come. The, you know, I believe that other things are going to happen. But we must put our trust and our confidence in God and his ability to keep us in the midst of whatever we're going through. And so rather the economy crash. We got to trust in God. Rather, you know, uh, right now there's a big thing about uh, uh, the, Met, the, the Obamacare. Don't worry about that. Don't, don't be concerned about how am I going to pay for medical bills or, uh, you know, God will make a way. And there are times where people are going to say, you know, um, you know well, w we don't have medical insurance. What are we going to do? We can't, we won't be able to buy and sell at one time. If we take the market of beasts or whatever, what, whatever, you know, whether we go through the tribulation, whether we don't go through the tribulation, whether we escape it. Guess what, folks? We need to trust God in the days ahead. We need to learn how to live today in the now. When tomorrow gets here, God will take care of us. And I got several other things that God has shared with me, but this is the first of a few. And I just wanted to share it with you. And I want to encourage you to just share it with somebody else and tune in for the next one when we talk about some of the things that God has shared with me about this year, 2014. Thank you for watching. God bless you. And I hope that you have a Jesus-filled day.